Artificial eyes have played a vital role in restoring confidence and appearance for individuals who have lost an eye due to various reasons, dating back to ancient civilizations. Over time, the methods of crafting artificial eyes have evolved significantly, combining ancient techniques with modern technology to create lifelike prostheses. In ancient Rome and Egypt, artificial eyes were crafted from painted clay, showcasing early attempts to restore visual appearance. By the 1500s, Europeans advanced the art by fashioning artificial eyes from enameled gold and later glass, which remained the norm for centuries. Today, most artificial eyes are made of acrylic, marking a shift from traditional materials. The process begins with an initial consultation with an ocularist, who specializes in fabricating ocular prostheses. During this consultation, the patient's needs and preferences are discussed. Once the patient is ready to proceed, the ocularist takes an impression of the eye socket using a specialized material known as alginate, a white powder made from seaweed that is mixed with water to form a cream, which is also used by dentists to make impressions of gums. This impression captures the exact size, shape, and contours of the eye socket, providing a blueprint for creating the artificial eye. After the impression is taken, it's time to make a mold. They place the impression in a mold and pour in a type of plaster. After the plaster has hardened, they remove the impression and what's left is a plaster mold of the socket. Now they pour a wad of acrylic plastic dough into the mold, lock the mold in a press, and place it in an oven to cure. The acrylic model that emerges from this process is known as the fitting shape because they use it to fit and mark the position of the fake iris. They accentuate the markings and then attach a peg with a drop of wax. The peg indicates the natural angle of the iris when the patient is looking forward. More wax is added around the perimeter to enlarge the fitting shape. This excess will give the ocularist some room to work with for the final sizing. This enlarged fitting shape is placed into a plaster mold once again. This mold will be used to cast the actual artificial eye once the iris is prepared. The iris, or colored part of the eye, is painted onto a flat plastic disc which is measured to the size of the patient's remaining iris. Each iris is hand-painted using oil-based paints, and the technicians work from either a digital photo or a previously painted eye to make sure that it will match the other eye. After 18 hours, the iris paint is finally dry and it gets pressed into a button-shaped disc. This puts a curve on top of the iris so it'll be flush on top of the round eye. The iris is placed upside down into the mold that was prepared beforehand and the white of the eye is made. It's made out of ploy methacrylate, a medical grade acrylic plastic similar to the material that's used to make false teeth. Once prepared, it is squashed down into the cast on top of the iris and the whole mold goes into an oven for two and a half hours. The eye is now starting to take shape. The excess material is trimmed away on a grinding wheel and the eye gets stained and veined. The average human eye isn't snow white, so a bit of watercolor paint is dabbed around the edges depending on the patient's natural color. This embroidered silk is used to replicate the veins of the eye. The thread is separated into individual fibers and applied with an acrylic varnish. Just one centimeter of this thread will provide enough fiber to make over 100 eyes. A coat of clear acrylic varnish is applied over the top of the eye and it gets oven cured to seal it. Finally, a buff and a polish give it a nice, glossy finish and the appearance of a living eye. The expected lifespan of an artificial eye is around six years as long as it gets looked after properly. Once the artificial eye is polished and finished, it is ready to be fitted into the patient's eye socket. The ocularist carefully inserts the prosthetic eye and makes any necessary adjustments to ensure a comfortable and secure fit. This may involve trimming the edges of the prosthesis or making minor modifications to improve alignment. Before the patient leaves the ocularist's office, they receive comprehensive education on how to care for and maintain their artificial eye. This includes proper cleaning techniques, hygiene practices, and instructions for handling the prosthesis. The patient is also advised to schedule regular follow-up appointments with the ocularist to monitor the fit and condition of the artificial eye. In 1957, the American Society of Ocularists, or ASO, was established to raise standards and provide education for the ocularist. In 1971, the ASO began to certify ocularists. Those who already had well-established practices were automatically certified. Others had to complete a five-year apprenticeship under the direct supervision of a previously certified ocularist and complete 750 credit hours of related instruction approved by ASO. 
In 1980, the National Commission of Health Certifying Agencies, or NCHCA, created an independent testing organization for Oculus called the National Examining Board for Oculus, or NEBO. In November of 1981, NEBO administered the first National Board Certifying Exam. Board certified Oculus must be recertified every three years. To achieve a fellowship in ASO, a board certified Oculus must accumulate 375 additional credit hours of related instruction and have demonstrated outstanding ability in their practice. Advancements in computer, electronics, and biomedical engineering technology have resulted in the invention of bionic eyes. Bionic eyes, also known as retinal prostheses or artificial retinas, are advanced medical devices designed to restore vision in individuals with severe visual impairments, such as retinitis pigmentosa and age-related macular degeneration. These devices work by bypassing damaged or non-functioning retinal cells and directly stimulating the remaining healthy cells to transmit visual information to the brain. These kind of eyes, while representing a significant advancement in vision restoration, have several limitations. These include a lower resolution compared to natural vision due to the limited number of electrodes in the retinal implant, resulting in a restricted visual field and potential tunnel vision. Implantation requires invasive surgery, posing risks such as infection and tissue damage. Additionally, bionic eyes may not offer the same level of visual acuity or depth perception as natural vision, impacting tasks requiring precise depth perception. Adjusting to the visual input from a bionic eye can also be challenging, requiring an adaptation period for the brain to interpret artificial signals. Furthermore, the high cost of bionic eyes makes them inaccessible to many individuals with visual impairments, particularly those from disadvantaged backgrounds. However, research is being done to create new devices as well as improving outcomes with existing devices. Prostheses are being refined to make the lifespan of devices longer, improve quality of life with more powerful and smaller devices, expand the field of vision, increase the number of electrodes, and improve clarity and sharpness of vision.